Hey man, welcome to D&D with high school students, man. We are here with the season three cast. Except Skyla's not here, Rip Skyla, but Tony and Beecher are here. Sam's over there jamming down, laying down a, a percussive groove. That's right, people. Now, if you all remember last adventure, the great council had convened and uh, you all had been asked by his holiness himself, Kor Pai Gambar, oh. yes. to, <laughs> to escort we'll his holiness's princess, his, his niece, the princess, because she was ill in a fashion that could not be cured by any of the local magic, divine or otherwise. They could not identify the nature of the illness. Do you feel what I'm saying? I Brother, feel they you. were sick. So then, all right, I can't just imagine. I was like, I was, I was wondering, I was like, I was how long is your stuff going? It's, it's itchy, man. Like, it makes my head itch. Ugh. There's probably like lice in that wig. <laughs> that wig's just been here for like. Chris has it. Yeah, I don't know how many people have oh, worn that wig. It's I'm so probably going to have lice. All right, so anyway. Can you even get lice We'll probably involved? continue to make Could, Melissa. That's a good question. <laughs> Uh, Siri, can you get, you get lice when you're bald? I do not yes, know. Yes, Bill, you can get lice in your mustache. <laughs> no! All right. So, um, so as you recall, you guys uh, had been asked to escort the princess, and you're. It's a relatively safe route. It's not like you're like, oh yes, take her through dragon-infested mountains. Like this is a pretty much a straight route to an existing keep, to a military settlement. So it's not like you're taking her through, you know, harsh areas. But the idea is that they're very unsure about what is making her ill, what's causing this sickness. They can't define it, if it's a poison, a disease, whatever it is, right? Space AIDS. Yeah, it's something that they are unable to. So the idea was you're going to escort her with her, her armed guard and her shield maidens to um, Kadim Kika, and there is the abbot at the monastery who is a renowned healer. So His Holiness has utter faith that the abbot will be able to discern the cause. But at the same time, strange things have been happening coincidentally alongside these supernatural occurrences with these red demon babies. So that is one of the reasons why both the Archbishop and His Holiness himself think that maybe you guys could lend some insights into what's going on with the princess. So you're given all the amenities that the palace can offer. Uh, they will they will pack all the supplies that you need. All you need to do is like bring your own personal armor, weapons, supplies, whatever you need. And the following morning, you will you will be presented with a gift, and then you will hit the road. And they'll have Hank's pig chow. Yes, and they will Hank can come with. You can ride Hank. Yeah. Yeah, so they even have space in the back of one of the wagons for Hank if Hank is like too tired, tired from the road. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, but before all that happens, guess sure. what, guys? It's time to level up. Yes. Dude. All of you have been waiting so long, Woo! and I did the calculations. I t no, I didn't. I'm lying. I just made. I just decided arbitrarily that now it's time to level up. How much can I was up? thinking. I'm sure that wow. there are math nerds everywhere who are very disappointed that I didn't add up all the CR ratings and experience, but who cares? You have leveled. So here's how this is going to work. Since we've never leveled live, I, def I felt like this might be an instructional moment, mm -hmm. an opportunity, if you will. Yes. So if you're looking at your class sheets in all of our wonderful player's handbooks provided by many friends who have donated things. Thank you, everyone. Greg Thompson, the mysterious Mr. M, uh, the deluxe core set from Mr. B. Where's oh my gosh, Mr. B, thank you. Um, so, Tony, you will be on the Bard page. Uh, be sure you'll be on the Warlock class page, and Sam, you'll be on the Rogue. So yes. you're moving from level three to level four. Now, take okay. a look across the column. So each one of you has one of these, okay? So take a look. As you go from third level to fourth, do you notice the proficiency bonus change? Or is it still plus two? Plus two. Okay, so then that stays the same on your sheet. The next column over is features. So as you look at fourth level, what features do you get? It should say is ability it? score improvement. Am I mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Is that all it says? Or do you get something else? That's all it says. How about you? 
Uh, I get ability score improvement. Okay, so ability score improvement, the way that works, guys, is this. You can add two points to a ability score, or one point to one ability score, and one point to another ability score. The way that the bonuses on ability scores works, though, is that on the even number, it goes up. So you want to look at what your main ability score is. So Sam, what's your dexterity right now? Is it 19? Uh, yeah, 19. So if you add a point to that, it becomes a 20. So your plus 4 becomes a plus 5. What other stats do you have? Read, read your stats from top to bottom. Uh, strength, 14. Constitution, 15. Intelligence, 13. Wisdom, 13. And Charisma, 14. Okay. So what's cool is that, that your Constitution of 15 and your Dex of 19, if you put a bonus point in each one of those for your mm -hmm. ability score improvement, that gets one of them to 20 and the other to 16. That means both of them go up. Tony, how about you? Uh, for You're, dexterity? So you have dexterity at 16. Now right. you could put two points into it and boost it up to 18, but your charisma is only 15, right? Mm -hmm. Might be nice to boost that up, right? It might be nice to boost that up to 16. And I'm trying to figure out where you'd put the other one. Maybe an 11 turn would, into 12 for strength? Yeah, time. that was what I was thinking. Okay, so there might be um, a, a vast gathering of nerds whose heads will explode if you do that. Because they'll be like, why would he boost up strength? It doesn't matter to him at all. Which is true. I just want to point that out. It doesn't really affect okay. most okay. of who yeah. Kademan is. Because you know Kademan what, then, attacks Can, I, can I add it to intelligence, maybe? Because you could. I think... Cademan does kind of attack. Or now, just know that the 14 to a 15 doesn't affect that plus 2. It's still a plus 2. It doesn't turn okay. into a plus 3 till you get to 16. But that, oh, but definitely that. putting something in your charisma, because you're a bard, might right. be a cruciality about, that you want to... So, would 17... But see, I... So, I definitely wouldn't want to put... 17 gets you up to plus it, 3. Right. All right. Oh, so does 16? Yeah, so 16 and 17, either right. way, get you to plus three. Right, so that's why I'm trying to figure out, because then there wouldn't be any reason to put it anywhere else, right? I mean, well, the, what about but the extra one after that? So I know obviously making this one 16 or 17, but like... The extra one, one after that is kind of a wash until the next ability. All right, well, then I should probably give it to... I'm still going to give it to Intelligence, because that way it's at 15, and that way I can give... The next time I can give it to True. 16 then. Okay, so what you're going to do is erase your 15 in Charisma, make that a 16, and then turn your Intelligence from 14 into 15. And then the bonus, Tony, so write down 16, and then change that to plus 3. And the, the Intelligence bonus is going to stay the same. So, Sam, yours, you're going to erase Dex of 19 and make it a 20. Mm -hmm. And you're going to write plus 5. Mm -hmm. And then your Con now becomes 16, which is plus 3. Dope. Okay, now here's the... How about you, Chief? What do you um, got? I'm going 1 into Intelligence to make it 12. Okay. So I get a bonus, because I like to be able to yep. be in sight. That or, gives you something. Or, wait, what did I... Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, What's your Charisma? 18. Okay, so it doesn't make any sense to boost that to 19, because the bonus is still going to be the same. Yeah. What other odd number... Do you have, do you have a con or dex that's odd? Dex. What's your dex? 11. Make that a 12. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, so that, now you get a little bonus to your um, AC. No, so now you're AC? plus one. Okay, so now, 13. this is the sort of pain in the rear part. If you changed a stat, that means, and you got a bonus from it, you have to go through all your proficiencies and change the number for any of those stats. You understand? So we have to. So like, go from add the top, right? To... You have acrobatics. Mm -hmm. If your dexterity changed, like yours did, mm -hmm. then you have to figure it out, right? So you have, what's your acrobatics right now? Plus six. So it'd be plus seven. Because you have a five for dex, plus two for proficiency. So what is charisma? Oh, I see. So charisma, Tony, would be all oh, of your sweet. deception, yeah. persuasion, performance, Love it. and intimidation. So you're just going to add that new plus one into that, you know. Well, so deception goes up to five, which is awesome. Right. See? So this is where fourth level is a big milestone. Because at fourth level, you get that ability score. Now, I should say this. I'm not going to push it on you guys. But there's an optional path that you can choose called feats. Feats are, in the player's handbook, they are basically 
an alternative to taking the ability score improvement that give you like, I don't want to say a power because it's not always magical, but just like a boost, like an enhancement. And sometimes the feat give you a little bonus to an ability score. Sometimes it gives you like a special feature or like an ability that you can do better. Plus seven for persuasion. But right now at this level, your best bet is to boost the scores that you have, okay? Now, you boosted your constitution too, right? Mm -hmm. What that means is that your hit points for fourth level are gonna go up. So do you okay. see there where it says hit die? Mm -hmm. 1d8 plus yeah. con. So in my game, I let you max out through fifth level. So you're gonna have, instead of a plus, what was it before? Plus one in your constitution or plus, plus two? Plus two. So now you have a plus three to your constitution. So that's gonna be 11. So your new maximum is gonna be 41. Oh, do we just go up by a whole hit die? Yes. So it's the whole hit die plus plus your con. So Tony, your constitution didn't change. So it's two plus eight is ten. So you you basically now are gonna have an even forty. And Hank has six hit points because he in level two. No, I'm just kidding. Pigs don't have levels. <laughs> chuckle, chuckle. All right. Um, the other thing that you get, uh, if your dexterity changed, yours did. Yeah. That means your armor class changed. So what was your armor class? 16. So now it's going to be 17. Ooh. Yeah. The other thing is your saving throws. See the saving throws? Yeah. That's going to go up. So if your dex and con changed by one, that means it goes up by one. Uh, your saving throw, Chico, went up by one for charisma. So change that from a four to a five, because it's three plus your proficiency bonus. And, Tony, this is extremely exciting. Nothing else changes for you. Um, I like that. <laughs> I mean, it's still Lost good. Map. You still have, you've, you have, from the get-go, you've had very, like, highly above average stats. I mean, two 16s, a 15, a 14, and and a 10 and an 11. Yeah, like, and now my, have no bad no, stats. my persuasion is plus 7. Yeah. Which means if I roll a nat 20, You are extremely persuasive. Extremely persuasive. And you know what I'm going to do, Sam, to help my... you? And my first move to be able to use the songs um, to enhance her abilities when she goes to, like, try to hit on... Um, his holiness. His oh holiness. God. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna oh sing. God. I'm gonna sing an enhancement. I'm gonna sing an inspiration enhancement, mm -hmm. so that you can persuade better. Oh, thank you, Tony. You're welcome. I have to do it for a minute though, because that's what it says. I'm gonna sing the Joker for one minute. For All right, Steve Mill. now, um, Tony. One thing that you and Beecher also need to look at, because yes. you are spellcasters, uh, is I'm the other right column. Now. So as you go through fourth, <laughs> right, the other column. you have cantrips known. Look, you get a new cantrip. You go from two to three. What? So you can add. What? So right Dude. now, see the cantrips that you know? Yeah, Blade I know. Ward and Vicious I use Mockery. all of them. You get Blade. another no, cantrip, so we'll look that it's up in the back. Ward. And oh, Blade Ward's kind of lame. We're going to swap that out, um, because you'll never use it. Yeah. So spells known becomes seven. Instead of six, so where do oh, you... so it's this? Are these my spells? So it's four and three. So you're gonna have four and then erase two and make that three. Okay. Oh, oh that's, that's super awesome. lame. No, it's good. You no, want no, no more second level spells. No, so, I know, but I like all my and first change level your two spells. to three. You keep them all. You can keep them all. I know. So change that two cantrips to three. Now we're gonna flip to the back and look up your bard spell options and um, and get you some bard. Okay. Do I have any more? You have no more. Okay. That's why I like rogues. They're super easy to level. You're like, done. Super. You just hey. adjust your numbers. Hey. You adjusted your, your saving throws, your hit points, your AC, you're done. All right, Tony, I feel like uh, Blade Ward is lame, so just erase that. Thank God. Yeah, it does suck, though, because I've never used it. Um, you might prefer, <laughs> I mean, now Vicious Mockery is still pretty good, but you might prefer more useful thing yeah, like I'm gonna get minor rid of, illusion. Can I get rid of vicious mockery? I already have minor. minor illusion? I already have minor illusion. You do? I, yeah, I use it sometimes. Oh, as a as a forest gnome. Yeah. Okay. What about message or mage hand? Hold on, I'm getting or, rid of getting rid of vicious mockery too, because honestly, that's that's helped one time, but like I don't remember that being like. It wasn't. It helped a little bit, but it wasn't like a key 
spell. Element, yeah. So Mage Hand might be your your thing, because it allows you, or I'll read it. A spectral floating hand appears at a point you choose within range. This is a 30-foot range. The hand lasts for the duration or until you dismiss it for a minute. The hand vanishes if it is ever more than 30 feet away from you, or if you cast the spell again. You can use your action to control the hand. Oh. You can use the hand to manipulate an object, open what? an unlocked door, stow or retrieve an item, pour the contents out of a vial. You can move the hand up to 30 feet each time you use it. The, can, the hand can't attack, it can't activate magic items, or carry more than 10 pounds. But if I was like, uh, hey, give me that book right over there. <laughs> I could yeah, just I mage like hand that, that stuff that? right to me. Mage hand. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. Wait, it, that's what that one guy used on... Yeah. Uh, Elixia. Yes, Smarty Pants, yes. Oh my god, I remember When things. he picked the mouse up, oh, that was yeah. Mage Hand. <laughs> All right, now, the other thing that you might like, Tony, is perhaps... Uh, so you already have, as as a forest gnome... I already you, have... You have, um, what do you have? Uh, I have Dark Vision, Gnome Counting, Natural Illusion, uh, Speak with Small Bees. Can I do more things with beast spell? Is there anything I can add that's beast I'm, related? I'm looking. Maybe... Because... All of my plans in my head are always like, dude, let's get that cockroach on my side, or I want the pigeon. I to heard do all of your spine just crack right there, dude. <laughs> that was like an I, ASMR I, dream come true. I have true. the other side to do. Give me a second. Oh. I wish I, I could like do that. that at all. I wish I could do that. I can. I can kind of do it with my knuckles. I might can you hear it with my up. neck? Can you hear my neck? Wait, can you hear mine? No. Oh. Nice. Wait, I can do. Ones. I can do my ankle. <laughs> oh, that, that didn't work. <laughs> that did not look like it cracked. Ow! Oh. <laughs> I can do all of my toes. I should be on one of those shows. Wait, ready, shows. ready, ready? Oh. Ow. Depressing. I have double jointed fingers, so I'm the only one that can do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Tony, this is dope. This what? is the perfect spell for Tony. What is it's it? It's called Message. Oh my god. You point your finger toward a creature within range and whisper a message. The target, and only the target, hears the message and can reply in a whisper that only you can hear. It's the perfect meta moment. You'd be like, don't do it. Kill that guy. Yes! Like, what? That's perfect! Steal a gem. It's a, Wait, it's to, a to cantrip. Another, you can send it to you a person. You can point to a person and oh. whisper. It's a cantrip? It's 120 feet away. Dude, that's you can cast the spell. You can wait. You can cast this spell through solid silently. objects if you're familiar with the target and you know it's beyond the barrier. So if you know, if you see Beecher <laughs> walk into another room, even though you can't see him, if you know it's Beecher and you know he's in that room, you could point right, in the general direction and be like, Beecher, it's a trap. Get out. <gasps> but, but what that's if? But what dope. if? Bill, can I use it no, like wait, the other way? Like, nope. what if I know that? Like, if I want to like psych out the wizard. Yeah. And I know he's behind that door, and You'd I be know like, the wizard behind the door, and I'm just I like, I see you. Stop touching yourself. She's <laughs> <laughs> just like, this it's just shot. like, wait. You know, I <laughs> stop, stop harassing the book boys. With the also, target, like, I know it's guys. so. Magical <laughs> silence, one foot of stone or one inch of common metal, a sheet of lead or three feet of wood block the spell. The spell doesn't have to follow a straight line and can travel freely around corners or through openings. Cool. That's amazing. Oh my god. So if like Sam Big sneaks deal. off to go scout something, you could be like, what do you see? And then she could be like, there's a trap over here. And there's, there's six orcs. That's oh my cool. god, that's a awesome. Message. Wait, message. I still have one more, Bill. You do? Yeah. Right. Anything yeah. with beasts, Bill? Um, well, friends, no, that's not really. That's animal message. Do you have dark vision? Same I do. Have do you dark all vision. have dark vision? Yeah, we yeah. all have I think I already had this moment. Mine is dark vision plus uh, 60 something. Well, 60 feet. you could. All right, so you already have minor illusion? Yeah. I have natural illusion. What about prestidigitation? Prestidigitation. That sounds... it's, uh, it's like little magic tricks, but again, for somebody like you who wants to be like trick, tricky, you can do prestidigitation. Prestidigitation. It took me all of my life to learn how to say that. Mm. More time. Prestidigitation. 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 Is that right? Yes. Prestidigitation. It's just dig. All right, let me read that to you. Prestidigitation. The spell is a minor magical trick that novice spellcasters use for practice. You create one of the following magical effects within range. You create an instantaneous, harmless sensory effect, like a shower of sparks, a puff of wind, or faint musical notes, or an odd odor. 
you instantaneously light or snuff out a candle, a torch, or a campfire. You instantaneously clean or soil an object no larger than one cubic foot, which is actually, like, people use that for, like, instant shower. Like, if you're grubby and stuff, you can be like, boop. Yeah, I kind of want that, and I'll tell you why. I think that'd be cool if, like, we were, like, sneaking up on someone. You can chill, like, warm, out. or flavor up to one cubic foot of non-living material. Exactly. So you could grab, right, like, so a I bunch of water say. and make it, like, Kool-Aid. What? Okay, yeah, I want the Kool-Aid spell. All right, prestidigitation. Write that it's down. weird. <laughs> what, you think I don't know how to spell it? Prestidigitation. Do you? You create a non-magical trinket of an illusionary image a that non- can fit in your hand and that lasts until the end of your next turn. So you could create something that's not really there and be like, look, I have something cool to show you. And like a little like dancing wizard that's guy. That's awesome. Or what about, can I make it like a gem? It's like... Yeah. I have the gem you're looking yes. for. Yes, it's not actually magic or real. It's illusion, but you can right. do that. Wait, wait, what if it was the wizard? Would he know? Like, if I was like, here's A more powerful gem. wizard would probably recognize this spell for what it is. But, like, your commoners would, would be, like, blown away by it. That's good because I'm a folk hero. I'd be like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm cool. Can you do this? It's very it's useful. Like See, you're the kind of person who could use that. A lot of people... Like, I even, I'm, I'm guilty of this. I grew up thinking those spells were lame. I was like, what would you ever use that for? And now, like, me, me is like, dude, there's so many things you can use but that But I for. like, like, the little spells. Like, sleep. So many things. I use sleep for, like, well, so many things. sleep's moves. not a little spell. That's a first level spell. But oh. cantrips, like, I'm saying there are a bunch of cool cantrips that people, yeah. I haven't they, really they don't think, my cantrips yet. like, message. That's amazing, dude. Yeah. Like, you know, that's amazing. So now you know, Tony. Now you have I just like Insta Shower, Kool Aid. I think that's great. Insta Shower. Yeah. Kool Aid. Trippy background. Like you, while you're telling a story, like while you're performing and telling a story, you could put on your own light show. Bill, watch, (gasps) watch. Tony can make his own light show for. Ah! I start playing, right? And then in the middle of it, I open my mouth, like to. Like to scream, and, and my own face is dancing. Like my body is yeah. like dancing on my tongue. That would horrify. Like and small children like, would run away. <laughs> dude, but imagine if they were into punk, dude. They'd just freak out. They'd be like, "This is the best." Yeah, thing like maybe ever. if you had to perform. Like Sean. Yeah. Sean would love it. Yeah, I feel like that it might be true. Oh, I'm. Oh, I'm definitely getting scorching ray. All right. That's so are you? Sick. Are you good? Yeah, I'm done now. Okay, so I hope that uh, the leveling up process wasn't too boring for everybody at home, but uh, I, I felt like we haven't done that on camera, really. So I thought maybe it was kind of cool to go through that. Um, and I will separately level up Skyla when she rejoins the adventure um, with her her party. Yes. Yes. So um, that is level four. Oh, and obviously change your on your notes where it says your bard level three make that four so that we're all on the same page okay. literally the same page okay are you ready yes. are you actually ready okay <laughs> so the next <laughs> Krafa could actually, was... you could probably do that live. Just... Krafa has magical powers that we just don't get to see. I've seen them before. <laughs> that is... They are powerful. Camera oh. is switching rapidly. Krafa told, so I was in here earlier. Krafa like... is exhibiting his powers right now, and <laughs> viewers are going to throw up. They're like, Grah! motion sickness. Krafa comes in here earlier, I was like playing guitar, and he's like, what if I rep right now? And I'm like, yeah, Croft, just do it. And he like comes over, like he's gonna do it. And he like rests his head like on the table and he like looks up and he's just like, okay, okay. And I'm like, he's gonna do it. And he's just like, no. Okay. And I'm just like, Before we start in, I just have to met a moment for one moment. Okay. Legit. We had the opportunity to meet DOD Spec Ops. Oh my God. That oh, was yeah. awesome. At, he, ah! came, he came out for Lion Con. So cool. And it was awesome. That was so cool. Was so and we went out to lunch. This. Just really quick. So just say hi to DOD Spec Ops. We, D&D Spec Ops. D.O.D. Spec Ops. D.O.D. This is literally the coolest thing ever. Yeah. And you guys can't see it on and the camera. And we know you're Greek. Well, he painted it down to like the we eyeball. We figured it out. Crap your code. The Dude. unboxing, the unboxing uh, is, is amazing. But, uh, I mean, it was just cool. Cool to hang out with yeah. uh, with the D.O.D. In, in real life. 
All right, He's you guys, a very dedicated fan. the next yeah. morning, are called out, and the the great banquet hall, you guys, like, you, you know, right over here, like, the breakfast and all the great banquets and stuff, there's, like, tons of people there, right? Um, and, like, all, like, the archbishop and, and all the other, like, nobles and stuff are all there, and the banquet begins, and everybody's there. No sign of his holiness. Not there. Not there. Um, after a while, the archbishop stands and gathers everyone's attention, and, and he's like, I call upon all of you today to honor our guests who will be once again serving the theocracy as faithful citizens of Kabul Kailash. And now may you all stand and attend as His Holiness Kor Pagambar, the Chosen of Water, joins us. Everybody stands up. Um, you see like two, two double doors open. Kor Pagambar enters. He is not wearing like full armor. He's just wearing like robes, but mm -hmm. you feel like probably his robes are worth more than your life. They're like, Sam. they're like silver <laughs> and like there's like gold embroidery. Um, and whoever like did the, the sewing on them, like has like somehow managed to put like scales, like iridescent kind of like almost magically glowing scales on them. Behind Korpai Gambar <laughs> are four men carrying a bed and on this velvet, red velvet bedding is a wooden chest and not just like a crappy shipping container. Like, this looks like somebody carved it. There's, like, ornate, like, it's got detail. Like, they're down to, like, this level of miniature detail. Like, there's, there's like, an epic carving in this huge chest that's carried on a velvet bed by four men uh, with, like, poles over their shoulders, right? He goes up and he sits in, in this, the largest of the chairs, and there's, like, open space before him, and there's a, a water fountain, right? And the men, like, set the chest down in front of him, and he looks out over the crowd. He doesn't say anything at first. He just looks out over the crowd. And you notice he look, looks at each one of you and nods. Does he linger a little bit? Oh. You, see, you see, actually, you don't see this. Well, maybe you do. Roll insight. Do I have to roll insight? Yeah. Nine, or 16. Two. Yeah, You're like, that chest is amazing. It's, it's, it must have some arcane Nat value. 20. Okay, Tony, you I'm see, 20. as he's just glancing over the crowd, you notice, like, either something, like, a piece of dust got into his eye, <laughs> or he just winked at Elore. Like, it was... Message, I want to use message. It was, do you really? Yeah, I look over at It's her. pretty quiet right now, I so I'm just saying, like, imagine a dead quiet room, and then you going, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I do it. I do it. I All look right. at Sam, yeah. and I go. Remember, you have to do this. So you have to act it out. I look at her, and I go, what, dude? Are you hooking up with the king of, like, everything? So you hear, so you don't, <laughs> you don't actually see him, because you're, so, Sam, so you're, like, something. looking at his holiness, and you just caught the swing, and then you're, like, in your ear, you hear this, like, the best what are you <laughs> It's like the whispered voice of Cademan. And, and you're like, how is this happening? But you you keep your cool. I have to respond. Can yeah. I respond? You, can, you can whisper back. We'll see. All right, so you... <laughs> so I just keep like whispering to Sam. I don't get yelled at. All right. Tony, this is easily your best spell that you... Yeah, I know. This, <laughs> this is a lot of fun. His holiness like draws his robe back, sits down. Everybody else sits down. And he's like, welcome... All of my trusted friends, family members, and allies. We are fortunate enough to have been blessed by Musaik with the coming of these most faithful and loyal heroes. Perhaps the Equinox has brought them here, but now they have committed once again to, to serve the Theocracy, as they will be escorting message, my message. That's what he said to Elore. Right after the, you have once again chosen to serve the theocracy. That's what he said. Shut up. 
I will now present gifts to our honored guests before they depart with my niece to Kadim Kikala. I call forth the one known as Kademan. Oh, man. I walk up. I walk up. He looks at you and he's like, Kademan, I was blessed with a gift some decades ago by a most talented traveler. Your service is much larger than your stature could ever be. So I feel that this gift would be appreciated by you most of all. I swear to God. He looks to the chest and he, he, he gestures and like two of the dudes that were carrying it open the chest. It's he reached chair. down. High chair. He pulls out a loot. And it looks like the most magnificent musical instrument you've ever seen. Like the wood is like this rare, like Why rose would wood. Why have my stature? Oh, as a musician, okay. It, it's like, it looks like a very, you know when like you see like a violin that looks like it just looks it's like. It's like a million dollars. Yeah, yeah no, like I, it I has this incredible look to it, right? But beyond just that. That character played for be, what, or did you say pick man? I have. I, I have. Remember what you picked? Uh, land, land horn, mandolin, guitar. Man, all right, it's not a lute. It's a mandolin. Okay. Okay. So he pulls out the mandolin. Oh wait, what? That's dope. And it's got. It's like this amazing, like rosewood body, and like the neck has like these ivory inlays, and like the pegs are like ivory. Like it's very. It's exquisitely crafted. Wow. It has like this mosaic of. <laughs> Imagine, like, finely shaved gems that are, like, encrusted around the border. Like, so, Dude, like, all along what? the border are these, like, little, just tiny little gems that almost, like, as you move it, as he's, like, holding it out for you, it picks up, like, glints off the light. And he goes, oh. I believe that you will respect and honor this gift and use it wisely, for I have been told that... To the performer who honors it, it will honor you in turn and enhance your abilities. And he hands it to you. I look at him and I just... <laughs> Tony just drops it. Oh, God! <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry! Oh, God! It just shatters. Everybody's like, oh, murmur, murmur! I turn it over, I like, message to Sam. I'm like, I'm so sorry, he trips, it's not happening. He trips over the case, drop, falls on the mandolin. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. All right, so you, you go back to your seat. Can you, I thank him? Can I yeah, just yeah. Like, thank you, your highness. I'll tell, I'll tell many, I'll tell... Tales of your greatness throughout all of my travels. Mm. <laughs> and I bow. All right. Hey. He, he nods to you. Maybe I'll get to him first, Delore. I don't actually say that, but I'm thinking in I my I now head, call stereo. forth <laughs> Olin. I'll get up. Storm Shadow. No, I just. <laughs> <laughs> Olin. The ultimate edge. You have demonstrated great judgment and. Astute perceptions regarding things that are both magical and not magical. It would seem that your insights are perhaps beyond your years, as you would seem to have an old soul. Anyone who has been in your presence would not help notice that the way in which you yield, uh, wield a scythe is much more like an artist than a farmer. And it is thus that I will bless you with a simple gift that I hope you will appreciate. Once again, he gestures down. The two guys, like one of them, lifts this thing out of the case. And it's a scythe. But it definitely doesn't look like yours. So the wood, first of all, the wood is like... It looks more like a staff, like an actual, like one piece of wood that was carved down. Like there's knots in it. There's, yeah. there, you could see the wood grain, but it's dark. Like, not like stained, not like, oh, he stained it, like stained wood. Yeah. It's dark wood. And the, and the blade, the scythe blade, pokes out on one side, almost like in a hook fashion, 
through the notch and then comes out the other side in, in, a, in that yeah. crescent shape, right? Okay. And the blade itself is crazy sharp looking, like <laughs> razor sharp. Like you're like, is that, like if you were to hold it like, instead of this way to like hold it this way, you'd be like, is there even anything there? Like it's thin, yeah. almost to the point where you're like, wouldn't this just break? As you're thinking this, he stands up and he grabs the scythe and he like looks to one of the men and the guy pulls out like a, a sheet of wood, like a board, not yeah. a piece of paper. And like they hold it between the two of them and you see him step back and then he goes, and, and slices the piece of wood in two on diagonal cuts like it was paper. <laughs> and then he like <laughs> backs up. So, And then he reaches for it and Lord hands Lord it to you and bows badass. towards you. Wow. I'll take it. All right. As you take it, the Pretty first sharp, thing you notice is that it's crazy well balanced. Like typically you're used to like the top metal yeah, end of your scythe heavy. being heavy, right? This yeah. is like... You're like, whoa, like you took it with one hand and it was kind of like well balanced. The second thing you notice is that the wood smells burned. Like it, like it smells like burned, but it's yeah. super hard. Like you're like, Jesus, it's, it feels like, it feels more like metal or stone than wood. It looks like wood, yeah. but it's blackened. Thank you, your holiness. That is a gift from a visiting priest. It is said that it was, the wood that it was set in was touched by Vem, the goddess of air. Dang, boo. Thank you, again. Struck by lightning during a great storm. Burned and petrified. You cannot smash that wood. It will never break. Dude. I cannot express how, how much thanks I have towards you. Thank you. I call upon Elore. What's up? Oh, I was, I was I pretty early. Up. I'm like, <laughs> dude, they're fucking. You are, s <laughs> you are subtle, yet swift. I had a most difficult time selecting the gift that would best suit you, but I feel that you will appreciate this perhaps most of all. <laughs> if it's just, just like, like the crate with a hole in his penis. <laughs> Dick in the box. Yeah. All right, come, you must grab it. No, that's not. Uh, so so yeah, it, oh God, he reaches in into secret. the chat. <laughs> He reaches you know what you like, but yeah. you must reach in and grab it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Twist. He, he pulls out a rapier, and the rapier is, so it's like your rapier, like a sword, but it's got like a guard, a hand guard over it, and it is encrusted with gems. Like, and the blade of the rapier is like gleaming, and you see this rune, like this symbol etched into it. And when he holds it up, it briefly glows like blue. And then he, he kind of like aims it out. He sets it on the tip of his finger and like holds it like this. And it's balanced perfectly. And then he like taps it and it just spins around like above him like a helicopter blade. And it doesn't fall off. It's like perfectly balanced. And then he flips it up, grabs it, goes... <laughs> Reverses it and hands it to you. Whoa! Dude. Thank you, Everyone Your Highness. No, I know he's Thank so cool. You. I know that. I'm so jealous of Alora. <laughs> that you will make the theocracy proud, and I look Ooh. forward to seeing you after ha having you return to the. Hold on. <laughs> he's like. He's choking. <laughs> I. Oh. I look forward to seeing you after the, I mean, having all of you return to the capital. Let us thank all of our honored Choking. guests. No, Everybody I, stands I, and like, claps. Before he claps, <laughs> can I scoff loudly to myself? So that like just a couple of people around me notice, but they all look over. We have like a little moment. I, I can even do this scoffing volume. You gotta be going off. Like, he goes, he goes, oh, so I can edit right after he chokes. I just go, 
And he kind of like. So I don't you, think he notices though. No, he doesn't. No. So you guys, you guys finish the banquet, mm -hmm. and then about you know probably like an hour later, um, the archbishop's uh, the archbishop himself, not even his assistant, he comes to you guys and he's like, uh, "We will be departing shortly." I, I'm sorry, not we. You guys will be departing shortly. Um, in the palace oh. courtyard, you will see there will be two wagons. Um, the rear wagon is where the princess and her um, servants will be. Her shield maidens will be escorting uh, the rear wagon along with two of His Holiness's finest knights. There will be uh, several other knights escorting as well along with you. All of the provisions, supplies for the journey uh, are laid out and as well as the necessary camping supplies. So if you would meet down in the palace uh, courtyard in about uh, perhaps a half of an hour. Okay. That's enough time. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> uh, I have on the rare chance, very rare chance, that there are any encounters that would require combat. Uh, I have had my assistants um, brew up some healing potions for you. So um, they will be down at the carts as well, each each one of you should have sufficient supplies. Um, I'd like to roll insight on the him. blessings of the gods. Yeah, please do. Right away. Yeah. Um, because I'd still remember him being suspicious from the whole Yomi Wait, isn't thing. Isn't it your, the uh, archbishop this is archbishop. himself? Yeah, I know it's the archbishop mm. himself, but think about it. It's the archbishop's assistant that Yomi um, said. Okay, okay, yeah. So, and he's like, there's no one else that works for the archbishop, but I just want to roll insight, because that sounded weird. He said, we, and he stuttered. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. he just did that with the whole um, yeah. holiness thing. Yeah. And then it's also also the healing potions. What if he's trying to screw us? Because we called him out before. You feel as if he's telling the truth. I got a six. Someone else roll inside. 19. You feel <laughs> as if he's telling the truth. Okay. Bill, can I ask you a question about my scythe? What, do I get any more attack bonus? Yes. It's only plus okay. two. Okay, so your, uh, your mandolin yeah. grants you a plus two to any performance rolls. And it has another magical feature that you won't know wow. about so until, now, until you attune to it. Now no, no, no. my performance don't goes write, up Don't erase two. that. Leave the original, write the original number in there. And then to the right of it, write down plus two. And then you have to add that in. Okay. Seven. And and there's another now. Anytime you have magical items, you have to attune to them. Not actually, not all of them, but just some of them. So this is one where you have to attune to it. So during a rest, you basically have to like I play my mandolin and get used, to, you know, and you like attune to it, and then you'll find out what other abilities it has. You your scythe also is you have to attune to it. Yeah. Okay. But it gives you a plus one. So it's a magical weapon. It to gives you a plus bonus. one to hit and damage. Okay. Hit and damage. And then it has another effect that you will discover when you attune to it. Do Same I, thing with your it rapier. So it's a, a rapier D6? plus one. So add that into your total to hit. And then to your damage, you add in a pl another plus one. So Sam, your damage now should be what? Plus six? Plus seven. Seven? Mm -hmm. The big yeah. table. Remember to see so. who knows him. Oh yeah, but whatever. Yeah. Okay. Do, you, do I get still have a D six or do I get something better? Uh, it's two D four plus one. For damage for the yeah. scythe, it's two D four plus one, because it's weighted differently and the blade is significantly better. Okay, two D four plus one. Right. It was plus two originally, so. 1d6 plus two? Yeah. Before I gave you the bonus? Yeah. So it's 2d4 plus two. Okay. Okay. All right, so you guys wait, uh, or you, you get all your crap, and basically you go down to the, the palace courtyard, right? And you basically see that there's these two really well-appointed wagons, and there's guards, and there's you know equipment being loaded on. 
the, the rear wagon is completely closed off. Like the curtains are drawn. There's a driver. Um, this mini represents the princess, Rip. But you don't see her. Like she's in the, the wagon, okay? Her shield maidens are there. And then you see guards towards the rear, okay? Then the front wagon is where all the basic like supplies are, like the tents, the sleeping bags, all the food, the water, all that stuff. And that's where you guys and the other guards are, okay? Okay. So, actually, you know what? It would make more sense if they switched this. Wait, what about, what about it, Sam and the Holiness? Yeah, I gotta go have a, a quick little meeting. Okay. So before you all go down there, mm -hmm. is that what you're gonna do? Okay, what do wait, you do? Wait, wait. Can I give her performance enhancing? Uh, Bardic inspiration. Yeah. You can inspire her. Yeah, what would you say to inspire her? Well, I don't have to do the one minute performance. That's what the, what's the... This one says, That's for your mantle of inspiration. You could oh. just do bardic inspiration on her, which is where you like give her a pep talk and then she goes and does whatever. Turn to her and I go, Laura. Now remember, he's a very strong old yet dragon man. Okay, so you have to be careful with strong old dragon men. But I want you to get in there and get it because if you do, you could help us all with money. <laughs> So basically, you're pimping her out, is yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. No, I, Alore, I like He's to think of us as friends. He's inspired. I'm just like, to hoe it up. Get it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. I'm going to chime in and go, yeah, Alore. Do this one for the team. Give her a cowboy. <laughs> okay, okay, so I. Right. Is everybody like out of the area yet? Has everybody been dismissed? Me and. So you go back up to the area. Laughing. Everybody's pretty totally much out of there. <laughs> you see, like, one of the... His Holiness's, this like, stewards is just, like, team. tidying up a few things. Mm -hmm. And he's there. He's there. So he's I... He's like, oh, hello, my lady. Uh, are you preparing for the journey? Yes, I am. <laughs> do you have anything to do within the next 25 minutes? <laughs> Wait, it's an assistant. It's not the king. Oh. I mean, not the lawyer. Where's the other dude? Where's Why? the king? 25 right. minutes, that's a pretty specific amount the, of time, We have to Laura. be back in 30 minutes, and so oh. five minutes Do you ask if you can up. see the king? Yes. Okay. I do. Okay. Um, roll persuasion. Oh, that's pretty good. Thanks, D&D &D dice. I got a 21. Okay, so you, the Persuade the steward's it. like, let me let me see if that's possible, and he like runs along. You <laughs> wait in the parlor. A few minutes later, he's like, he comes back and he kind of has a surprised look on his face. He's like, um, my lady, uh, His Holiness will see you. Let me let me lead you to his chambers. So he he takes you through. There's like a long hallway. You see a couple guards on either side. Um, there's a door. Uh, he goes to the door. He puts his hand on the door, and he says, like, a, he's like, and the door, like, opens. Basically, it opens crib? up. Is it like a jacuzzi? Is it like James Brown hot tub? No, it's, it looks Last totally hour. normal. Oh. And he, he, like, bows and gestures for you to go in. Okay. So you go in, and it's a huge room. And there's, like, columns and statues. Oh there's, there are, like, fountains, because remember the goddess of, of water? There's, like, mm -hmm. fountains and baths and stuff. Yeah. And you see, like, on the far cool. corner of the room, he, it looks like basically he's sitting in a... There with he's just... Wait, no. what if, what if he's, he's just, <laughs> what if he's just sitting rows, by a pool a and he's just got like, a single yo, towel? That's, like, literally, over his that's literally kind of it. But he's, <laughs> he doesn't have a towel. He's in a pool. Like you, so you're looking far away, like he's in a pool. You see his, basically you see from behind and you see his like hulking shoulders and arms. He's ripped? Just, yeah, he's shredded, dude. He's got like a 20 strike. He's the holiness. He's and you just see, you see like, you see him from the back. So he's like the rock? Sam, you're and you see oh him God, get up good. from the pool, right? And he's oh. still got his back to you, but he's naked because he was in the pool. And you see him like turn Wait, over his shoulder. Oh naked. my God. It's his own pool. It's like it's like a jacuzzi. It's a hot tub. And he turns he turns over his shoulder. And you see he reaches he like reaches out his hand and like a towel basically rises through the air and comes to oh, him. Oh, I thought you were gonna say he brings me closer to him. <laughs> like <laughs> Sam let's he, do it. He wraps the towel around himself and he's like Greetings, Alore. Forgive me, I was 
preparing. Relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> I was preparing. <laughs> so, I was raising my testosterone. So he invites you to sit down in this ornate, comfortable, there's like pillows and stuff in this area. It's kind of like a day bed. And he sits down and he's like, please sit. What did you wish to speak to me about? <laughs> So, so, King, I'm just going to cut right to the chase. Are you busy in the next 20 minutes? Fade to black. Fade up from black. Everybody's smoking a cigarette. No. Um, yeah, basically that happens. <laughs> yes. That just happens. Uh, he doesn't have no to make way. a proficiency check. He gets advantage. He gets advantage on, on, his, on his love making roll. He gets advantage, which means he takes the higher of the two rolls. And he has a plus 15 anyway, so he wins. <laughs> so he wins that so sex? What does he yes. say after? Wait, how does Sam do that? Or how, well, I mean, because I, I mean, if you, yeah, if you, you could just you could just roll and make it totally not narrative. There you go. That's pretty good. What'd you do? An eleven plus oh, persuasion no. equals something. But you know, 15. yeah, fifteen. There you go. It's very persuasive. Wait, what does he say after? Um, that was great for you. So the weirdest thing is happens because you've never hooked up with a dragon or porn before. <laughs> Afterwards, he basically curls up and like goes into a oh. coma. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm... <laughs> that even his six-month hibernation. Wouldn't that be funny though? I made that up. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't really. Happen. Wait, 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 wait! You should make that a thing. And then when Matt tries, Luigi, to... draw wait, that. Wait, draw the wait, king wait. in the coma. Wait, wait. Mm. <laughs> I just. Wait. Wait, 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 Bill, Bill, Bill. You know those floppy air guys outside of like car dealerships? It's like when they deflate, he just goes, Ugh. Bill, 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 uh -huh. Bill, you should, you should, you should convince Matt to hook up as Yomi with some girl. This is going to be and the, then, last, the soon, last episode. As soon as, as soon as Yomi does it, like, he's just like, yeah, I do it. And then after oh it's like, God. Matt, you crawl up into a little ball and like can't move for like eight days. Oh my God, I can't breathe. Okay, so everything's fine. Wait, so he doesn't say anything? No, he, he does. He just the says leave. He gently, he gently strokes your hair and like has like fresh fruit and stuff. And he tells you that he wants to spend more time with you, be safe. He and says, that when you return, he wants to see you again. Oh my god! Okay. And he asks you for one more thing. Discretion. I can't tell anybody? He goes, not yet. And then he, and then he goes like this. And... and you're and just and then just and then he's he's gone. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, what if I was just like messing around with like a um like a, like a hologram? <laughs> he just maybe turned it was, like a maybe it was all a dream. <laughs> all right. Dream. Okay. So, so fast that forward. Happens. Um, Forty minutes later, you guys are all like waiting out here, and you're like, "Come on, man." And then she comes down, she's like straightening out her armor. I'm an insight roll that. Fixing her hair. Me too. Second. She's fixing her hair. Like 13. compulsively. 13. I got a four. You're like, women, they always take long to go on trips. <laughs> I got a 13. You're like, yeah, she got laid. All right. So, <laughs> so then you guys all get there um, and you're still waiting. And then, so this is the first time you see the princess. So the, the shield maidens escort the princess out, okay? And there's four, again, like four burly strong dudes who are carrying a bed. And the princess is like in the bed, like basically like imagine like a stretcher on an ambulance. She's a dragonborn. And she's very, but she's very like sickly looking and pale. And they like bring her out and carefully like load her so their like bed in. And then the servants get in and then the shield maidens are like, like, okay, we're ready to go. So the lead, the lead knight is like, points. The train starts moving, the horses start pulling the, the wagons, and you guys kind of start heading out on the road, right? You, you make your way through um, the, the city, and by the way, the oddest thing is that all the roads that you're going down are like cleared. Like there's city guards that have like cleared the way, and you see people like lined up along the way, right? And as your progression goes through, people are like tossing like flowers into the street, like in front of the, like 
pet flower petals and stuff like into the street. Mm -hmm. Like you're like, this is like hundreds of gold worth of like flower petals that people are like putting out into the streets. But that is the, the deep and genuine love that the people of Kabul Kailash have for His Holiness's family. So they, they, you guys go through this, the capital and you, you finally go through the West Gate and you're kind of out on the open road now. And you travel pretty uneventfully for the first couple hours, you know, just kind of going along. You guys don't really pass by too much. Um, there, there are some little villages and hamlets along the way, like, like ten houses kind of thing, like just little clusters. Um, some occasional farm things. Every once in a while you pass other caravans on the road. You, you notice that as you always pass other people on the road, like the guards are always a little more tense, right? Like you notice the crossbow guys, instead of just walking, like that's when they bring their stuff up and they're just, you know, they're kind of like keeping an eye out, right? And then about middle of the day, you, you break, you stop, you pull the wagons off into a field and the servants break out like lunch. They have some folding like wooden, basically like a table, like horses and a, you know, a door. Uh, they set up like food and stuff like that. Uh, you notice one of the, the um, women from the princess's wagon come to the main wagon and get like a thing of water and some like fruit. She goes into the wagon half hour later she comes out the same plate of fruit like nobody ate anything she like goes up to the shield maidens and like and the shield maidens are like <sighs> and they're just like sad so all the people like eat lunch all that kind of stuff does anybody want to do anything in particular while yeah. you're on the road yeah can i um stick on that power i feel like i could probably Bardic inspiration them or mantle of inspiration kind of because they I, I understand they're down But I feel like There has to be something I do to like comfort them because I feel a like comforting song Okay with your brand new Your yeah. brand new mandolin sure I'll do like a so you, you Play like a nice happy song and people in the camp genuinely seem to be like enjoying pleasant break from the road. <laughs> now you may roll. And add in your bonus from your loot. Your mandolin. I keep saying loot. Mm, 11. So 11 plus but, what? 7? Yeah, 7. So 18. Yeah. So you put on a wonderfully enjoyable seven. performance. Like everybody's <laughs> like, you see the mood just seems to be a little bit lighter and a little bit happier. Wow. So you guys are all like like in a little picnic thing, right? Mm -hmm. You're playing, people are like, yeah, so they're talking. And then you hear voices behind you. And it's like, my, my lady, are you okay? Be careful. And you guys turn around and you see the curtains to the princess's wagon opening. And the princess is like sitting out, looking out. And she's like, Rayloff, is that you? Oh, wow, you think so? <laughs> I heard music. Is he here? And, and I go, you see one of the no, shield. it's even better. You see one of the shield maidens turn and they're like, no, my lady, it's it's another another bard has joined us. His name is Kademan. And, and you see the, the princess seems kind of like confused, like really out of it. And like, oh, it's nice to hear music. Keep playing. And then she like goes back in, lays down. Wait, do I get to go to the princess's thing to like no. play music? No, but the shield maiden goes over to you and she's like, keep playing. <laughs> and then she goes back. Go. All right, so you keep playing. You guys have your lunch, you pack up, you get back on the road. Um, another probably four hours go by, right? Late afternoon, you make another stop, pit stop, give the horses a rest, water, food, all that kind of stuff. Very uneventful. Um, at any point, if you wanted to attune during a short rest, you could, but you know that you're probably not going to travel through the night. There's supposedly a small village on the road 
to Kadimki Gala that you guys are going to stop in and stay at an inn there, and it's like two hours away. So basically, you're, you're on schedule. It's been a very uneventful day of travel. You push on after the short break. You guys have all, all the while kind of been like studying your new gifts. You know, you're kind of like, you're, you know, and you're kind of like, you know, swinging it yeah. around and testing the balance of it and getting used to it and kind of like checking Wait, did, it out. Wait, am I getting used to it yeah. as I play? Yeah, you're you're kind of the same thing. You're like, oh, this is a really, oh, let me tighten it. And you're like I'm making adjustments. So you get to this very small village and it's, I say like probably like 20 buildings total. Like maybe there's 300 people total that live in this village, right? Mm -hmm. Couple blocks, that's it. <clears throat> and there's like two inns one that's decent and one that's like slightly better than a stable. Um, so you go to the inn and like you walk in and it's empty and the innkeeper's like, ah, you've arrived. Excellent. Per your instructions, we've reserved the entire inn for you. And like, you see like you guys are all brought in. Um, a couple moments later, the four strong dudes bring in the princess and take her to a room. It's on the main level. It's the only room on the main level and the biggest room and then everybody else is in rooms upstairs in the inn. Um, the lead knight is like, I need you guys to go check the inn. Okay. Thoroughly, like every room. Okay. All right. Uh, give the keys to them, they're gonna check the rooms. Okay. Um, so you guys are gonna make Insight? several in investigation rolls. So start off with uh, the main level. So. Each one of you are going to make an investigation roll for the main level. Tony, you too. Got a six. 14. today. Okay. 14. Investigation. 16. 16. Okay. So you two, <sighs> like, you're nine. going through things. You notice that, like, the main level seems to be pretty secure. Okay. Uh, the princess's room, it's on the main level, and it has one window but there's metal bars in front of the window and you can only unlock the metal bars from a padlock inside. Okay. So it's basically pretty secure right. as far as you could see. Um, the only other thing that would concern you on the main level is the entrance into the inn and then there's a back door out the kitchens to like behind the building where they throw like the slop and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, okay but those are the only two entrances other than like two windows. Um, and everything can be seen. Now, you go upstairs to search, roll again. Uh, ten. God, Five. Dude, what the heck? Seven. Upstairs, ten. basically there are four rooms. Each room can sleep four people. Um, they're small beds. Each room has one window. There's no bars on the window. Uh, there isn't even glass. It's just wooden shutters. So it never gets cold enough to really need like window windows. Okay. Um, but the shutters can be closed. The wooden shutters can be closed and locked from inside. Fine. So that's it. So you guys, you get checked in, you check back with the knight. Like he's like, okay. Um, basically all the animals gets, get put into the stables. Um, everybody gets assigned their rooms. So you guys are in a room with, um, let me see, one, two, are three, all four, three of us in a room together? five, six. Well, Fine. her shield maidens would stay, they're, they're going to be um, taking shifts. So they would be downstairs. So you're going to be on a rotation. So the, mm -hmm. the head knight basically asks each one of you to take a watch, which means like you stagger your sleeping schedule. Okay. So... You're going to be on the first okay. watch, oh, you're going to be on the second watch, you're going to be on the third watch. Why can't they stay up and do watch? They are. Oh, we just have to too? Yeah. So he, he wants somebody outside of each door, front and back, so that nobody could get in or out. And the shield maidens are literally in the same room as the princess. Okay. And they're, they're, on, they're taking shifts. So, um, all right, Sam. Roll a d20 for the first watch. This is your perception roll. Oh, pretty good. 19. Yeah. All right. At some point in the night while you're while you're at the back door, you're kind of like bored. 
and you hear like a skittering noise, like kind of like the sound of like a rat mm -hmm. in the alley or something like that. Okay. Um, but it doesn't seem to really be anything important. It just seems to be kind of down the alley a little bit. Can I just check it out anyway? Yes, you can. You walk over there. You see a pile of like broken crates and just garbage behind this building that looks like, like kind of like if in the absence of a dump, this is just where people throw things. Oh. <laughs> so, More or less but you don't, you don't see the rat. Okay, fine. <laughs> All right, second watch. You roll. Perception. Mm -hmm. Four. Okay. Nothing. It's an even, quiet night. During that, can I start practicing with my weapon? Yes. Okay. You do. I will reveal things to you after your rest. And you? Uh. Yeah, I'm gonna practice too. But uh, should I put that roll? God, what the oh, fuck? Roll there. Three. Okay, so <laughs> you had a great night of sleep, and then you know, you basically get up early to take your watch, right? Um, and you're in the back. You you hear some sounds of like, kind of like skittering sounds, like maybe a rat or something, or um, some kind of other animal. And it seems to be coming kind of down the alley. Can I try bit. to talk to it? Yes, you can. I I do that. Okay, how does that work? What's it called? Animal... Beast speech. Speak with small beast. I should just be able to roll. You should just be able to do it as a forest gnome? Yeah. Okay. What are you, um, what are you looking to speak to it about? I just want to ask what it is. Just kind of give like a little like call out there. Just like, hey, who's out there? Speak with small beasts. Through sounds and gestures, you can communicate simple ideas with small or smaller beasts. Forest gnomes love animals and often keep squirrels, badgers, rabbits, moles, woodpeckers, or other creatures as beloved pets. Okay, so you kind of call out in, in like a rat sound and you, you like get down on the ground and you're like, you make little like noises with your fingers and you see this like rat come out and it's not little, like it's a pretty fat rat. Like it looks like it lives well. It comes out of this pile of garbage probably about 30, 40 feet down the alley. And it kind of looks out to see what's going on, you know. And I call it over, can I call it it's over? Chick, 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 chick. Like five feet and it waits, looks around, chick, 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 five feet. So it gets basically within about 10 feet of you and it stops and it's like looking at you. And I'm just like, and I'm just like, hey buddy, you seen anything tonight? You see anybody else out there besides me and you tonight? It looks up at the building again, where you are. Hey, hey, pal. Hey. Just, it just keeps looking at you, and then it looks up at the building, and then it keeps looking at you. Can I roll, can I roll investigation? Roll insight. Here? You're sensing the motive of an oh, animal. Reroll that. Re -roll. 16 plus animal handing is four. No. Insight. Insight. Insight is plus <laughs> All the way. one. So it's 17 with insight. I don't know if it would, you know what, animal handling's a weird thing. I don't know if like knowing, if that would be tied I into. I mean, I'd say it's handling animals, but. Yeah, it is more handling them, but like, would that be, you're trying to basically figure out what it's doing, like what message it's sending, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you wanted to calm down. Charging. Yeah, hmm? so it's really insight. Charging. Charging. It's like motive. Okay. The true intentions of a creature. So what would you have total? 20 with animal It hands. seems to be, with just insight, was it 17? That's 17. good enough. It seems to be like telling you what you asked. You asked if, if it's seen anybody. Okay. And it keeps looking at you and then it looks up at the top of the building. And then can, I go, can I go investigate the top of the building? You could climb up to the top of the building. All right, yeah. I do that. Right. Do you Roll. go inside and get your rope and or, hook? Or do you want to ask me? Well, um, she's sleeping, but oh. you could you could wake her up and ask. You know what? I message me. I'm nervous because we both rolled low. Um, I'm gonna message Lori. We can't talk right now. We're sleeping. Mm, that's fine. I'm just gonna walk over. I wake up with Lori. I want to go to get my stuff. I'm like, okay. Hey, I got just kind of like a funny feeling. I don't want to take any Caveman risks. Caveman wakes you up. I'm like, hey, Chica, so. what's up? <laughs> I, I know you had a long 
day today. Probably very tired. But you know what? Didn't think I got I a funny feeling face. because I talked to this rat. All right. Okay. And I'm scared Just there tell might me what be you something want me to do. on top of the roof. All right. Okay. So I'm going to get my rope and hook and I want you to come up with me and investigate because we both know that I have 11 strength. So let's go. <laughs> and then we go. Okay. All right. So we are up there? Yeah, we climb up to the roof. Can we make investigation rolls? You, what's, what's your archetype, your roguish archetype? Is it thief or assassin? Noble. No, let me see Wait. your sheet. Thief. Yeah, so you just, like, you're really good at that kind of stuff. You're like, I'll go check. And you like flip out, like out of the window. You're like, wait, no. And she, you do like one of those, like grab the, the window pane and like flip out and flip right, up well, out of the roof. Can I follow her so I take And she rope. just lowers, lowers a little rope oh. and pulls you up. Okay. So you guys are up on the roof. It's a very straightforward, simple roof. There's one chimney stack for the main fireplace that's in the, inn, go in the living room. That. Okay. You have dark vision? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. You can both roll. Go ahead. You investigate the roof. Can I, I re-roll? No, no get way. Ones. No. Both of them get ones. We because if I had one. you roll behind a screen, you wouldn't know what you rolled. So I'm, I'm going to tell you. Okay, fine. So you thoroughly check. You find no evidence of anything. You look in the chimney, and it still smells like fresh fire because there's a, like the embers of the fire are still burning downstairs. Mm -hmm. You don't see anything. You have dark vision. You look right down. You can see the embers burning. You, there's nothing in the chimney. Uh, and if it was something in the chimney, it'd have to be incredibly small because it's I would not like a big to chimney. Do, I would like to do uh, fairy fire to like the surrounding areas of the rooftop. And will that go into the chimney? Not fairy fire. Fairy fire illuminates everything, right? Fairy yeah. fire would illuminate any invisible creatures right. in the area that yeah. you're casting it. You could do yeah. that. Okay. Okay. You do it. She gets outlined with a nice purple glow, and you see nothing else. What about in the chimney? Does it go in the chimney? Yeah. Yeah. You look around that. There's nothing. Okay. Sorry. I, the rat really seemed to think that there was something up here. Can we, can I go just, like, check on, or how far? The first, you said that the the um, princess is on the first level, right? Mm -hmm. How far is that off the ground? Like far enough where a rat would have to look up to it? Mm. Like... Yes, but not at the angle. Like like when he was talking was to Tony, it, was, it wasn't roof? like this. It was like up is at there the roof. is yeah. there another ro ro roof that you can see across the way? Yes, can there's I a just, small. Can I jump to it? You can. I'll let you make a roll. You can acrobatics across. Nine. <laughs> you fall. I'll let you make an acrobatics roll to not suffer pain. Is it a parkour roll? I don't like the roll? other one. Mm -hmm. Parkour. Fifteen. Okay, that's not bad. So you're like, ha, ha, and you kind of skitter down the building and fall. Then you climb back up, you go to the other roof. Investigation. Okay. I think you're just laughing at me. Um, 23. That's supremely good. You like scour that roof. And that's when you notice that there's a very, very slight footprint. Huh. Now it's not, a, it's like, it's obviously some kind of a shoe or a boot. It doesn't look like a hard-soled boot like the military guys wear. It looks like something softer, like soft-soled. But there's there's a print, a set of prints, that look like they were behind the stack. Like, the only reason why you found it is because you rolled this high. It looks like it was behind the stack, the chimney stack on this roof that you're at, facing the building where you guys are staying. Is there any other footprints? And it looks size? about humanoid size, like human-ish size, not like small like his. Are there any other footprints? Can she can she pick up on anything on our roof from that roof? No. No. There's no other footprints. The only way that you found this footprint is because there was like some soot, you know, from the fireplace, like some some ash kind of stuff that had settled around the chimney, and like this print 
was there. It's very subtle. Can I like Is look fresh, around, though? like over the edge? Well, fresh of... enough, like the rain would have washed this away. So can, can I look around, like looking over the edge of the building, like yes. around the perimeter, just to see if I see anyone? Can I do the same thing with our building, though? Yeah. Okay. Nineteen or no, seventeen. Sorry. Still very solid. You don't see anything that gives you any yeah, reason nine. to like track something down. I mean, there's okay. there's investigation obvious like tracks plus three oh, in plus the dirt three. from like wagons and people mm -hmm. walking, right, but nothing that's a, like ooh. I got a twelve. Do I notice anything? Not really. Same thing. Like you notice where people's wagons had gone through horse, you know, hoof <laughs> prints from horses, uh, people's shoe prints of different things. Like it's you know, if you went out onto a dirt road at any point in time, right. it was pretty heavily Well, traveled. I don't want to take any chances, so I message over to Lori. I'm like, hey, I'm going to go and keep an eye by the princess's door. Would you mind keeping an eye on the second floor? Because I don't want to take any chances of her getting kidnapped on this trip. Okay. I go do that. I just go stand by her door, just kind of like on the outside. I'm trying to crack you. Um, is there any, is there any, is there any, does she have any chambermaids on the inside of the door? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Can I tap on the door? The shield maidens are can I there. Can I tap on the door lately? Okay. Um, the door opens. A shield, like, a blade comes out first, and then the shield maiden. She's like, oh, it's you. What do you want? Hey, um, we're just... Shh, shh, shh. Sorry, just, just like, what do you want? There's a little something we're worried about. It's probably nothing, but we're just a little suspicious of something we found. A uh, footprint on the opposite... Um, roof kind of facing us and I just be on your you're clearly on your watch I just wanted to make sure the princess was being tended to good eyes let the uh, let the captain know all right we'll do thank you okay bye okay let me hit you back okay, bye. all right so then you <laughs> let the captain know the captain's like all right we'll uh some patrol out on all the sides of the roof send out two of the guys out yeah. so they <laughs> they basically cool. two of the guys, the guys get up like they put their armor like on. Barty and Gary. Yeah, they're maybe just send them out there. No, they're something. like these aren't just mediocre town guards. Like oh. these guys could, like one of them could kill all three of you probably. But oh. that like, he's not gonna send out just six dudes that suck. Like two guys that really. Any good. one of these guys is like a trained veteran. All right. So, but they're also wearing heavy armor. So like one of them like just puts on his padding and then he grabs his crossbow and like goes over, like, talks to you about where it is. He goes, he climbs up to the roof, he scopes it out, he takes a look at the prints. He's like, hmm. He comes back down. He meets with you guys back in, like, the living room. And by this time, it's, like, dawn, so, like, the innkeeper's, like, starting to get breakfast ready. The captain now comes out. He's fully clothed and armored. And he's like, uh, check the kitchen, make sure the food's clean. Me? Yeah. He, oh, yeah. No, you're still sleeping. He's like, check the kitchen, make sure the food's clean. Okay. No poison. Okay. All right. He's like, um, I saw what you guys were talking about. It looks pretty recent, those prints. I would guess it was from sometime in the last 10 hours. We're going to uh, we're gonna leave soon. But as we leave, we'll need to keep an eye out to make sure we're not being followed. Okay. I, I don't think there's any reason to be worried. But given recent things that have been happening here, uh, who knows? Okay. So you guys all have breakfast. The food's clean. Everybody gets up. They all get dressed, armor, weapons, swords, all that stuff. You have your breakfast, and you guys hit the road. And the second day of your journey begins. And that's where we're going to leave off for right now. We'll see you next time on... I, I, I don't really have a song for that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. K, love you. Bye. Thanks for watching all the videos. Make sure that you look up there and subscribe. 
And don't forget to check out some of the other videos, like them up there or those down there. We'll see you next time.